On today's motoring misery tour, we're going to be having a look at other electrical problems on this Range Rover. Now I know, I know, I know, they're never going to end. But we've got to start somewhere. We found out that it seems to be the multifunction unit is causing us all sorts of problems with lighting and other things. Fortunately found a brand new one in the UK for I think it was about less than 30 quid so we're taking care of that and we'll hope we we'll get it across here. Uh, the other day we mentioned about we're having problems with the key fobs. Indeed we are. People said why don't you have a look on eBay, UK, USA I can see if you can find one. Well in fact did find one. 700 US dollars each. The Americans go put crazy prices on stuff. I don't know why. Surely they'll find somebody who'll buy it sometime. So I'm not going to be blackmailed into that. If push comes to shove, I'll try and find the corresponding uh, UK unit that go under the dash. If I, this is if I can't find a, a 315 megahertz uh, single remote and uh, change it all to a UK system. It's the only thing I can do. Pity, isn't it? Anyway, today's motor mis misery <laughs> is last night I was looking at some other things that I better check before I put, box it all back up again, and that's the heater. Yes, indeed. The heater is working, but not quite as it should. So I think we better dive in and have a look at that and see what we're going to do. Fortunately, We've got the Disco 1 outside and there's a lot of corresponding bits which equally don't work. So we're going to have to have a look. Less of this rambling, let's get inside, let's have a look. So this is the unit, it's very similar to a Disco 1. You can see there's a few differences. Uh, it's got a myriad of switches here, which wasn't in the Disco 1. And it's, this has got the up and down control for the air suspension, which was fitted to this vehicle but is... Kaput. So what we can do is change that unit and put a little sliding drawer there. The cover's missing off here, no big deal. But you see what happens when we turn the heater on, and you guys have had this problem many times. So there's the ignition on. Works on, works on full speed, but it doesn't work as fast as it should. See? There's something clicking, there's a relay clicking. So that needs changing. Not only that, let me turn this light off. Wait a minute, how does it turn off? Like that. And let's put the lights on. Let's turn this ignition off. And we turn the lights on and you can see why I might just change this unit. Uh, the decals on the outside are all knackered on this bit, look. They're all falling off, look. Knackered. Nasty. So this gives us an opportunity to take this off and have a look at this switch here. See if it, we can clean it up. I've got a suspicion it's the heater resistor itself that's kaput. But if we, we've got to be in here anyway, so this is really easy to get off. All we've got to do is pull your knob off and there's two screws under here and all that lock comes off. Um, this is looking a bit shonky. I don't know. Might keep that bit, I don't know, we'll see. But it's uh, had a bit of damp in this car. Notice too that clock's on the wrong side. I mean, if you're a drive, you can hardly see the bloody thing. Oh, well. Oh, well. Let's go and have a look at the disco one. You can see there, it's an awful lot better. Turn the ignition on. Uh, is that on? It blows a lot of mouse dust out, but the heaters work, the blower's working, so that's good, but not. And the AC section's working as well, listen. That's good. Let's get this out. As with everything, when you're working on anything electrical, disconnect the battery. I mean, we have enough problems as it is, we don't want to make them worse. To get the switches off, it's kind of easy, just just gently pry them off like this, it, they come off pretty easy. All right, I'm doing this with one hand like a real YouTuber. And also flick, flick your knob off here, 
this is a bit tricky to get off but just just gently tweeze it off and it falls on the floor so <laughs> you will see down here there's a screw here and there's a screw under there let's get that off and we'll unscrew it right i've just got the camera propped up on the console and then all we've got to do is just take that off now this gives us a great opportunity to have a look at the bulbs see if they're working I think they are <laughs> oh no I've got the battery off <laughs> but wait a minute this is the bit we want to get off so what we've got to do now is take the four screws off here and see if we can get that unit prized out should be able to well obviously that's not going to work because this piece this outer piece is sitting over this piece so how on earth are you supposed to get the switch out I don't know oh dear me now we'll get that out oh yeah we've got to take these out oh, we've got to take all this lot off it's not a big deal. I'm just going to do a quick edit because I'm sat in the Discovery at the moment. I should have told you how to get the radios out, the classic radios. Two millimetre Allen key down this hole here and wind it like this. Both sides, there's a little hole. Wind them both sides. And then the radio comes out because you see there's some little screws in here and it moves these little wings out to lock it. Once you've got that out, you can unplug the wires. Now on these ones here, I was saying to take those out using your pry bar like this. No, it, it, you don't, so I'm not showing you that. You put them in the top here, and you pry out two little clips that's inside here. Now you can just to say see that one there. You see you've got to push those down, and they're quite hard to push down. So that's how you get that out. Anyway, that's out. And uh, is there anything behind there? This has been out before because this is broken. At the back, there's supposed to be a screw at the back of there. Screw at the back of there, screw at the back of there. I think we'll take all this lot out. And then... Uh, we can... Uh, get to that one. It's exactly the same. You know, get a little stubby screwdriver up here, take these out, and all this front should come off. <laughs> should. Famous last words, in it. <laughs> Gonna have to try and find a magnetic screwdriver. Oh yeah, there's some little bitchy ones. So there's two screws here and one right at the very back. So I'm just doing this little video to, for myself so I know which way these wires go on. Usually, these type of flat connectors I've got some um, locating pins in so you can't put them on the wrong way but knowing my look <laughs> they'll probably go on wrong let's get these out then we can start to take some screws out one of my top tools that I've never really mentioned before apart from a screwdriver that is is one of these little things here they're brilliant they're, uh, it's a magnetizer and a demagnetizer you can buy them off eBay, they're only a dollar shop even, they're really cheap. Electronic shop, anything like that. What you do is, say you've got a, well let's put, put my hand down here. See if we can see this. There, that's better. Watch the bloody camera fall out and fall out the floor. So we've got a screw here. We want to, we want to really get to the screws and hold on whilst we put them in. But with this tool, you wipe it through here a few times. Look at that. See? Watch. Look at that. Now I know you like that, don't you? This saves you lots of trouble trying to get little screws out of recesses. So magnetize your screwdriver, but sometimes if you're working on like say cassette players or something radged like that you don't want to go around poking around with a magnetized screwdriver it could rest it could ruin your Barry Manilow tapes now taking the last screw out of here don't forget this there's, there's three screws in this side and three screws in that side don't just take the two out of the bottom don't take it out your bottom there's another screw here 
right in the top corners. You're going to come out. Come on. There you go. Magnetic screwdriver worth its weight in gold, isn't it? This bit should now come out. Don't do as I do and try and disconnect this by using your dismantling tool. It completely knacks it up. Take the wires out. I hope somebody's put a tie wrap around there just to make life interesting. Oh, God, that's what a freaking job. Get rid of them, that's not going back on so don't worry about that too much. Well that's going back on but not them uh, switches there. So that's out. I've got the two screws out of there. This is what this is the tool I used. It's a, a little ratchet with an adapter with a Phillips on the end, so you can really get into there. Now what else do we have to take out of there? I think there's a screw under here, under this panel here. Now, how does that come off? How does that break off? Well, that wasn't too difficult. All it said in the book was manoeuvre this piece off. It doesn't tell you that there's two little clips here and here. So I've manoeuvred that off. Where the? He said just disconnect the LED. How? Oh, like that. <laughs> Move that out of the way. I had to get the big light out. Couldn't see what I was doing. Right. All this to change a bloody switch on. Right, crazy. Now what else is holding this? Oh there's two screws there look. Oh, nice sometimes when you've got two people because and of course there's no seats in the car which is a Somewhat of a blessing. There we go. And now that panel will come out. And you've got to get these little screws out. They're stayed in. That panel's broken a little bit there. So somebody's had this out before. There we go. That stays in. And this should just come out now. There we go. That got him out. I don't know if it broke anything. Oh, is this supposed to not come out? Oh, that's on there. Oh, no, that's maybe not supposed to come out. It's supposed to just pull out the vent. Oh, hold on. Well, it's come out now. God, oh, Jesus, there's plastic in there. Get these wires out of here. Right, that's out. So we didn't need to take those clips out. It's not a bad idea really. We'll put that together in a minute. Because I want to get this heater switch out. What a fanny about. Um, how on earth is that supposed to come on? I suppose you've got to take all the bloody cables off now. Uh, if you've got a Land Rover that needs to change the spider unit, the security unit, it's usually hidden under here, you know, well out the way of everybody so they can't see it. Oh, that's all the radio stuff. Let me get those cables off. Right, to get the cables out, now if you can see behind here there's a little, some little clips. Maybe you can see, just to maybe see that blue one there. Just nip them together. That should come out. Should. Oh, cock of any idea this is. We need to take that off. How the hell does that switch come out? 
What a mess about to get this switch out. I don't think they're sold separately. It, it is a pig to get out. Um, it goes in from the back. I bet we can't even get a, into it when I bet it's all sealed up. <sighs> Peggy thing. It's held in by some extraordinary tight little clips. And of course the plastic's all brittle so you don't want to you don't want to break it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Sealed unit. But we can get some contact cleaner in there and clean it up. Well, got some contact cleaner in it. <laughs> Does it work? Well, it wasn't working. Probably blown a fuse now. Why isn't it working? I've got to thinking that this was a complete waste of time, but apart from that, yeah, you know, we've learnt something that don't touch this bit. I think now it, got, it has to be the resistor. Where's the resistor? <laughs> well, not in an easy place to get to, obviously. <laughs>